but it is now time for member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member from Toronto St. Paul. I've got a message from St. Paul's for this Conservative government. Hands off Ontario Place. Keep Ontario Place public. This government has quietly taken down the Ontario Place Statement of Heritage Value from its website. It's not the first time this government has disregarded culture and heritage. Last year, Architectural Conservancy Ontario and other key heritage stakeholders were not consulted on the disastrous Bill 23, which served as a slap in the face to our Ontario heritage system. Their Ontario Place Redevelopment Deal, or scheme? Same old deal. No meaningful consultation with community, Indigenous landkeepers, environmentalists, even its own landscape architect has stepped away from this government's ill-fated project due to its attack on climate change, including tree clearing, which would essentially kill decades-old wildlife habitat. I oppose this government's new No Deal for Toronto Act. It stinks of preferential treatment for friends and wedding guests and disregards comprehensive environmental and heritage assessments that should be necessary for large-scale infrastructure projects. Bill 154 allows for a government power grab, bypassing, breaking multiple provincial laws in order to complete Ontario Place redevelopment on behalf of their private luxury buddy firm. And don't forget, folks, the secretly publicly funded garage. We stand with Ontario Place for all, Future of Ontario Place project and thousands more across Ontario saying hands off our Ontario Place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Oakville. Thank you very much. And I first want to uh, say happy Scottish Heritage Day to everyone in Ontario of Scottish heritage. As member of provincial parliament for Oakville, I'm proud to discuss yesterday's passing of the fall economic statement. I'm honoured to highlight some of the significant strides that our government is making for the people of Ontario and my riding of Oakville. This plan features some of the most ambitious capital spending in our province's history, totaling $185 billion over the next 10 years. Let's dive into some of the initiatives that will make life better for the residents of Oakville. We are extending the cuts to gasoline and fuel tax rates, maintaining them at $0.09 cents per litre until June 30, 2024. This initiative will continue to provide financial relief to the residents of Oakville. We are also enhancing the Ontario flow-through share tax credit to maximize opportunities in critical mineral exploration. This will not only improve access to capital for small mining exploration companies, but support industries such as the Ford Auto Plant in Oakville, which is critical to in critical minerals in Ontario here. We've expanded the provincial eligibility for breast cancer screening for women ages 40 to 49 to underscore our commitment to health care and early detection. This expansion will directly benefit the women of Oakville, ensuring they have access to vital health care in our community. And as auto theft has increased in Oakville and across Ontario, our investment of $51 million to fight auto theft and assist police in identifying and dismantling criminal networks will help make the residents of Oakville live in a safer community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I'm rising this morning to pay great thanks to Dr. Danielle Brown Shreves, who's a family physician in our community who has just been recognized by the, uh, the Ontario College of Family Physicians as being a Regional Family Physician of the Year. She just won a Reg L. Brand Perkin Ontario Family Physician of the Year award by her colleagues. And let me tell you why, according to her colleagues. Dr. Shreves Brown leads the only black-led team-based family physician clinic in our city. Dr. Shreves Brown opens up wellness day opportunities for people in our city who do not have health coverage because of their citizenship status. Dr. Shreves Brown spends her own time meeting directly with settlement agencies in our city above and beyond what we would expect health practitioners in our province to do. And that's what leadership looks like to me, Speaker. That's why I want to thank Dr. Shrees Brown and her team from the bottom of my heart for all you do to keep our city healthy. Our city is living in a context, Speaker, where at least 150,000 people do not have attachment to a nurse practitioner or to a family doctor. This government has only allocated $30 million in the next two years. That's two bucks per Ontarian to expand primary health care. 
They should sit down with Dr. Shreve Brown. They should sit down with the Restore Clinic, and they should listen to other initiatives from Ottawa Centre. I'll be talking about them in this house in the next two weeks to put us back on track. But Dr. Shreve Brown, thank you for your service. Thank you very much. The member for Simcoe Gray. Good morning. I stand today to talk about the incredible history of volunteerism in my riding of Simcoe Gray. Indeed, Speaker, it is part of the DNA of our residents. And as we get close to entering the month of December and we reflect on the end of year and the start of a new one, I think about a full year of successful events, of charitable fundraisers, of community gatherings, and of sporting events that have brought the people of Simcoe Gray together. Speaker, like communities across our great province, the communities of Simcoe Gray are filled with kind, caring, compassionate, and dedicated individuals who give their time freely to many worthy causes. And the impact that this has across our, our communities, the ripple effect that it has, it through goes to show that the saying, a high tide raises all boats. Speaker, the word community in my mind is derived from two root words, common and unity. And our communities work together to ensure that they are supporting uh, their residents in a compassionate way, growing community spirit that can only happen when we work together. Speaker, recently I was notified by the Ontario Ministry of Citizenship and Multiculturalism that over 30 residents of Simcoe Gray are being recognized with Ontario Volunteer Service Awards. And I want to thank each and every one of those individuals. These years, this year's recipients truly represent the qualities that make Simcoe Gray so strong, and each in their own way and their own story of volunteerism has made our community stronger, more resilient, more inclusive, and more compassionate. So thank you to each of those volunteers and congratulations. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Members' statements. The member for Flanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Giving Tuesday was earlier this week the world's largest generosity movement. It was created in 2013 in Canada with a simple goal of encouraging people to do good in their own communities. Giving Tuesday has spread to over 90 countries, including thousands of nonprofit organizations participating in whatever ways they can. Speaker, many organizations in my riding of Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston participated this year, highlighting their missions, asking for donations, and gaining new supporters. Organizations like the Perth and Smith Falls District Hospital Foundation, who are seeking for donations to their MRI campaign. Lanark County Interval House is requesting donations to its Christmas holiday program, as well as becoming a volunteer. The Lanark County Community Justice Program is appealing for socks, mitts, or gloves that will be donated to someone in need. And Southern Frontenac Community Services celebrated Giving Tuesday by acknowledging their wonderful volunteers and thanking the public for rallying behind its mission to work with others to provide health and social services. I would also like to congratulate the Perth Lions Club. I had the pleasure of attending their 70th anniversary celebration last weekend. 70 years of service and giving back to its community. Let's all think about how we can lend a hand to one favourite non-profit, not only on Giving Tuesday, but throughout the year. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements? Okay. The member for member statements? The member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour today to speak in front of the House. I would like to speak about the people in my riding of Cambridge, who are truly fortunate to be cared for by countless organizations dedicated to making their lives better. Among those organizations is the Southwestern Ontario Aboriginal Health Access Centre on Coronation Boulevard, which provides quality health care and services to Indigenous peoples. With six locations in southwestern Ontario, the organization recently marked its 25th year of caring for First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples, from Windsor to Waterloo, Wellington, and north to Owen Sound. In that time, they have provided care to more than 35,000 people. A highlight of the 25th anniversary was the grand opening of a location on Dundas Street in London, Ontario. However, 
celebrations will continue in the next couple of months. The Southwestern Ontario Aboriginal Health Centre was found in response to academic, excuse me, epidemic, uh, systematic health disparities and, and uh, things that were not equal within the Indigenous population of Ontario. Its mission is to empower Indigenous families and individuals to live in a balanced state of well-being by sharing and promoting holistic health practices. The centre provides innovative Indigenous informed care through a combination of health and social services. This past summer, myself and MPP Don Gallagher were honoured to attend the grand opening of the ceremonies of the Cambridge location, where we were treated to the traditional sights and sounds of Indigenous culture. And we were privileged to have a meal with uh, the centre, and they served buffalo meat, which my EA, Grace Camara, had never tried before, and now she's a lover of that meat. Thank you. Thank you very much. I recognize the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, I was pleased uh, to join members of the Lebanese community and my colleague from Ottawa Vanier yesterday to raise the Lebanese flag in recognition of Lebanese Independence Day. On November 22, 1943, Lebanon was declared a sovereign nation, following 23 years of mandate rule. November is Lebanese Heritage Month here in Ontario. It recognizes the many contributions of the Lebanese community across our province. I was proud to introduce Bill 60 here in the Legislature, the Lebanese, uh, Lebanese Month Heritage Act, and I would like to thank the member from the Pian and the member from London West for helping to pass that into law in 2017. In my riding of Ottawa South, we have a very strong, deeply rooted Lebanese community. Every year there are wonderful celebrations in our riding, celebrations of Lebanese culture, such as the annual St. Elias Festival. It's one of the biggest festivals in Ottawa. And actually one of my friends, Michael Kakish, met his now wife there. Uh, at the Lebanese Festival, and I always like to say about the festivals is that they combine the five Fs, which is faith, family, food, friends, and fun. It's really, if you're ever in uh, Ottawa in the middle of July, please come. Lebanese Heritage Month is an opportunity for Lebanese Canadians to celebrate their culture and traditions. It's also a great opportunity to recognize and educate future generations about the great contributions of the Lebanese community has made to our community, to our province, to our country, and to the world. Contributions made but not limited to law, science, politics, business, and culture. Happy Lebanese Heritage Month. Thank you very much. The member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured this morning to announce that well-granted real estate dedication has elevated them to, as leaders in purpose-built housing, where from being final in North American division, are now winners of the 2023 Wholesome Gold Award in global competition for excellency in sustained architecture and design in Venice, Italy. Wow. And it gives me great, play, great pride to report that this project is taking place in my ride in the Scarborough Center at 1925 Victoria Park. This purpose built is a mid-market rental building that fulfill a critical void in the marketplace representing the scalable strategy for solving Ontario's housing crisis for which our government, under the leadership of the Premier, is tire tirelessly working to solve. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to welcome Jordan and Gabriel Diamond, both Vice President of Well-Grounded Real Estate, for taking us to the world stage. Welcome to your house. Your accomplishment not only bring pride to yourself, but to all Scarborough of Centre resident, all Ontarian and all Canadian. Thank you and congratulations for success, but also to ele elevating Scarborough Centre on world stage. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. 
I stand today to honour firefighters like Captain Sean Coles, who served as a firefighter for 24 years, nearly half his life. He was diagnosed with stage 4 esophageal cancer and is not expected to see Christmas. He's the father of two kids, and after his diagnosis, Sean not only had to fight cancer, but also fight to ensure his family was supported, because even though he had dedicated 24 years in service, he was one year short of qualifying for benefits for his family. The blue bracelet I'm wearing was created to raise funds for Captain Cole's family, who would have been left without their father and unsupported. Thankfully, just last month, the latency period for esophageal cancer, the mandatory period of service before qualifying for financial service, uh, supports, was reduced from 25 to 15 years. Sean has the relief of knowing his family will be financially supported. As well, his name will be added to a memorial, showing he gave his life for something bigger than himself. But, Speaker, more must be done. The risk of kidney and skin cancer is also incredibly high, and their latency period must be lowered. The restrictions for eligibility for colorectal cancer must be changed. It makes no sense that once a firefighter reaches 61, they're ineligible for supports even though they can serve on a truck until 65. So firefighters die of cancer at two to four times the rate of the general population. They're at the highest possible occupational risk for cancer. We must step up for firefighters the way they step up for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Burlington. Good morning, Speaker. This year, at their 2023 Distinguished Entrepreneur of the Year Award Ceremony, the Burlington Chamber of Commerce paid tribute to Al Taylor. In 1959, on his 20th birthday, Al founded Taylor Moving and Storage. In the 63 years since the company's founding, Al Taylor estimates his company has moved more than half a million people. Speaker, that's more than the number of people who currently live in Hamilton. Today, Taylor Moving and Storage employs more than 120 people, including Al's sons and grandson. From the very start, Al knew the importance of keeping his business in the community. His story, rooted in hard work and determination, mirrors the very soul of entrepreneurship. From sweeping floors at 14 to driving trucks at 16, Al's early days provided a hands-on education in the School of Hard Work. He hustled, built relationships based on integrity and trust, laying the foundation for an extraordinary legacy. Al's story embodies the Canadian spirit of entrepreneurship and community building. The Taylor legacy continues through Al's sons, Richard and Russell Taylor, who purchased the company in 20, 2002. I would like to congratulate Al Taylor for his years of service to the Burlington community. Thank you. Thank you very much.